Okay guys, we're back for a second class lever. If you look in your book, you'll see that the second class lever has the fulcrum at one end, the resistance in the middle, and the effort at the other end. Um, if I had masking tape, I would actually just tape this end of the fulcrum down, or excuse me, of the, the lever down to make my fulcrum. So think of a wheelbarrow when you're thinking of a second class lever. Just like before, you are going to measure four distances. So the resistance distance is from the resistance to the fulcrum. The effort distance is from the effort end to the fulcrum. Notice that the effort distance with a second class lever is always longer than the resistance distance. Then, as you are moving this back and forth, I also want you to measure how far off the ground or off the tabletop the, both the effort and the resistance have gone. So for example, if I pull this up, let's say it goes that high, I would measure this distance from the tabletop to the bottom of the lever for the resistance distance. Same thing over here for the, from the bottom of the, or from the table to the bottom of the lever for the effort distance. Once you've done, made those um, measurements for three different scenarios, so I can move the resistance closer to the fulcrum, or I can remove the resistance farther from the fulcrum, so I'll do that three different times, write all those numbers down, and then calculate mechanical advantage for each of those three times, okay?